Right to be read podcast, episode number three. First writing experiences. You are listening to the Right to Be Read podcast, and this is your host, Ani Alexander. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Right to Be Read podcast. Today, I would like to talk to you about the first writing experiences, about the days when.、Um, You wrote something, and you realize that from that day on, you would like to become a writer, and that's something you would like to do for the rest of your life.、Uh, that point happened to me actually one day when I was just sixteen years old, and I say just because for me it's quite young age、uh, to understand what you would like to do with your life. But、uh, I know many writers who found out that they wanted to become a writer. In much much younger age, so、um, maybe I was even a bit late、um, back then. So what happened when I was only fifteen?、Um, actually, when I was quite young,、uh, my family started moving from country to country for various reasons, and I ended up uh, changing uh, many countries,、uh, changing many schools. Uh, living in different places, learning different languages, and、um, not always it was very easy. So when I was sixteen, for the fourth time already, we took our suitcases and moved to a new country. Usually, I adapted quite easy because of, at that point I already got used to the changes. But this time it was a bit harder because this time, for the first time in my life, we went to a place where I didn't really like, and I intentionally refused to adapt to that place. That is why I felt quite isolated and depressed and lonely. And I'm saying this because I think that、um, the state of the writer's soul has a profound impact on what he writes. The state of my soul made me start to write. Actually, it was yet another ordinary day. So I will talk to you about the exact day when it happened and how it happened because I'm still surprised and I can't really find any logical explanations for that. So it was yet just another ordinary day. I sat at the kitchen table and started doodling. For the record, <laughs> I can say that I can't draw at all. I draw really, really bad. So what I did was put different lines and circles on the paper in a chaotic manner. Nothing really looking nice.、Uh, it looked stupid. It looked quite、um, uninteresting. But I was just killing the time. And then I started writing different English words on top of the, that whole mess, and it, it looked even worse. So the paper was、uh, absolutely messy at, by that point, and、um, I have no clue why the English language came to me first. Because for those who don't know me,、uh, I am from Armenia, and English is a foreign language for me. So、um, I'm sure you you can hear it in my accent, and you you already knew I wasn't English speaking speaker. But、uh, back then my English was much much worse. So、um, I started looking at the paper. I didn't like the way it looked, so I turned it around and put it on the other side,、uh, which was blank at that point. So the feeling of Desperation came over me at that point, and all I could do was just feel it. And all it could do instead was become stronger. So that's how we sat together in that kitchen. So imagine the picture of me, that messy paper, and my desperation sitting together in the kitchen. So it felt at some point that the kitchen was too small for all of us. Nevertheless, none of us wanted to leave, so we, we were not leave, willing to leave, and we sat there together, three of us, looking at each other. Then something quite strange happened. I picked back the pen, and on the turned around blank side of the paper, wrote English alphabet in one line, all in caps, one next to each other. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. And why did I do that? I have no idea. I can't really tell you why I did that, because it it just happened.、Um, I don't know.、Uh, um, no, no. I I still can't really explain. I can't find any logical explanation for that. Two seconds after that, I wrote the first line of my very first poem, 
And by that time, I, I didn't really realize that I, I started writing a poem. I thought I just wrote a few words. And then the second line followed immediately, then the third one, and then the fourth one. And I watched the alphabet above and came up with the last words of the next line and then linked them together with the previous line by writing those words in between. And uh, boom, in like five minutes, I completed a poem. Now, instead of the messy paper, I watched at a paper with alphabet line on the top and a completed poem written below. And um, it, was, it was so amazing that I didn't even know how to react to that. The process of writing the poem was nothing like what I imagined it to be because I, in my head I had this stereotype of someone who wrote and erased for hours, someone who struggled for words, often tore the paper and took a new one and started all over again. In my case, everything was smooth, easy and fun. In fact, it felt as if someone else was writing instead of me and I was simply watching over the shoulder. So I'm sure that I wrote many different things before for school, but when I think back to identify my earliest writing memory, this poem comes immediately to my mind as the first writing experience. This was the first time when I wrote something that really mattered to me. So uh, for those who are curious about what came up in that small kitchen and what we wrote together with the desperation, uh, I will read this poem to you. So it was written uh, 20 years ago, <laughs> but uh, it's one of the pieces that I'm not ashamed of. So I will read it for you. The future is so unclear and the embarrass is so real. What will happen after this Sunday besides that it'll be Monday? I just don't know, and there's no law by which the life goes without a single pose. Sometimes there are so many changes, and you see so much faces. Sometimes it's so uninteresting because there is no new thing. Life goes, taking with him joy and pain, sun and rain, love and shame. Sometimes you even think you live in vain. Well, life is a mysterious secret, the solution of which you'll never get. So I'm sure that everyone has his own unique first writing experience. This was my first step in that exciting journey of becoming a writer. And um, I'm sure everyone's was different. And I would love to hear your experiences. And maybe we can share them together and um, come up with a really nice compilation of stories of how we started writing. Well, that was it for today. Thanks a lot for listening and I really appreciate your time. That is why I'll keep it short. Just a few small announcements before we finish. First of all, I would like to say that I have created a closed Facebook page specifically for podcast listeners. And it will be a place where we will engage in discussions, share ideas and uh, share different tips inspire each other, support each other with our books and our writing. So the address of the Facebook group is www.facebook.com slash groups slash write to be read to in number. Besides that, I have created two ebooks which I provide for free uh, for writers. First uh, one is called A Year in Questions, and it's a PDF ebook which features 365 questions which can be used for writing prompts and ideas, journal entries, or self discovery. So you can use the questions for blog post ideas, short story ideas, journal entries, or writing prompts. The other book is called You Wrote a Book, Now What? It's a comprehensive checklist of all the things that you need to do after your book is complete. You can grab both books by visiting my website's link at www.annealexander.com slash free. Both books are there and you can download both of them for free and I hope they will be useful for your books. So, thank you very much once again for listening to the podcast. If you would like to support me, it would be extremely helpful if you would subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and also leave a review. So, thank you very much. Thanks a lot and see you next time.